Hello again, YouTube. My name is Bree, and in today's video, I'm back. I, I went on vacation and I've come back with an unboxing or an unbagging of a micro haul, the tiniest little art supply haul I am ever capable of doing. So um, I thought in today's video, since I'm still brain dead and still recovering from having been sick, I will try my best to edit out all the coughing that will inevitably sneak into this voiceover. Um, I would just try out these new supplies for the first time with you and talk about them, gush about paper, the usual. So yeah, um, first items on the agenda are these Tintoretto brushes. So I knew I wanted to try to get one of these super long quills from Tintoretto and spoiler alert, I don't know how to use it. I struggle with it a few times in this video and I will play in my sketchbook and try to figure it out in a future uh, at a future time and come back and tell you how I feel about it. The rigger I bought mostly because the handle is beautiful. It's like a blue, multi-shade blue marble and I loved it and I couldn't leave it and luckily it was pretty cheap. Um, and then I got this paper. So this is, I'm going to completely butcher all the Italian I say in this video and I sincerely apologize, but the Mignani uh, 1404 Toscana and I picked this purely because we were staying in Tuscany, so I had to get the Toscana paper. It is a 100% cotton paper. It is rough textured, cold press. And um, this is me being confused because I, to me, this looks like normal cold press. I think having mostly worked with arches, um, I think theirs is just more textured than a lot of other brands, but I didn't know that before. So... Yeah, I just expected there to be a lot more texture than there was, and that's okay. I mean, I really like the texture of this paper. I actually really like this paper in general, but I just expected it to be a lot more textured. I, one of these days, I'll try the Arches Rough Press, and we'll see how that goes. I do apologize. There are some of those bright kind of flashes in this video. I think I know what's making it now. I think my husband has his desk light pointed directly at me to not brighten his desk too much because it is very bright. He just got a new bulb and I think that's him turning on and off the light. So I'm going to have to fix that and block it when I'm painting so that doesn't happen. It happens like three times in this video. So sorry about that. Luckily, it's not too stroby, so I don't think it'll be problematic, but it already happened. Um, so yeah, for this video, I wanted to keep everything in an Italian theme because it's a little haul from Italy. So I use my A Gallo paints, A Gallo being um, a handmade paint from Assisi, Italy. And then I use my existing Tintoretto brushes because when you're using a bunch of new supplies, it does help like paper. It does help to like use some things that you're familiar with just to help balance out. So familiar pa paint, familiar brushes, new paper, and then introducing new brushes as I go and trying them out. And then um, I, I did include my Princeton Velvet Touch brush because that is my favorite brush for just scraping and scrubbing and sculpting essentially. So I'm not going to ruin a perfectly good brush. This thing is ancient. I don't know how long I've had this brush for and it's still in great shape from all the scrubbing I've done. 10 out of 10, definitely recommend as a scrubby brush. And um, later on in the video, I'll add some white highlights and I use Nicker Poster Color for that just because it's on my desk. But um, yeah, wasn't gonna buy new white gouache just to make this a complete Italy video. So that's fine. Include a couple other random supplies. So for the actual thing, I knew I wanted to do a portrait. It feels like ages since I've done a portrait. In fact, it's been like a month since I painted a person and I didn't like that last one too much either. So oops, getting in the bad trend there. But um, in thinking about Italy, I decided to kind of paint a more solemn looking dude. And that's partly because looking back on the trip, a lot of the statues and like churches had that kind of vibe to it, sculptures, whatever. But um, also having been sick for a lot of the trip, later parts of the trip, it felt appropriate. So that that's all I got there. Not much thought. Otherwise, I just don't have many, many thoughts left in my brain right now. Doing the best I can. I just came out of like speaking for like three hours at work today in the meeting. So I am doing my best. <laughs> I'm going to be completely brain dead in this video too, just like I was during the filming. So yeah, um, 
I don't know if I mentioned this already, but I just felt like I really struggled with this. It's only been a month since the last time I painted a person, um, a humanoid, <laughs> but uh, it just, it felt really like, I just never felt like I knew the next step to take. Normally building up the values and slowly layering up goes really easy for me and just very meditative. But in this case, like I just felt like I was kicking off rust. So it, it, it wasn't a good feeling, but I, I think I'm just tired. Um, otherwise I completely just lost my train of thought. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, I don't think it came out terrible, but it wasn't really what I wanted. Um, I just need to get back and practice again. It's been too long and also need to just catch up on other things so I don't have so many distractions. I gotta say for this paper though, um, I was really impressed. I tried to use a bunch of different techniques to really test it out. And generally I work wet on dry. So, but because it's a new paper, I wanted to start by pushing it right away and doing some wet on wet. So I started with a wash over the whole page that would just, I, it went really light just in case it didn't work out well, but I wanted to kind of see how the sizing felt of the paper first off, because I've tried some cotton papers that were sized really terribly. I'm looking at you, Mossery, and immediately upon like a wash, you know, it's going to be a bad experience. So that was good. And then I started layering some wet on wet and I guess because the paper is textured enough, maybe that's the rough part. It's like the perfect amount to kind of control the dispersal on the page. So that worked out really well for me. And then from there, I just started building up layers very light and slowly and painfully. Um, beyond that, I did do obviously some wet on dry because eventually you're always going to get there. And um, yeah, everything basically felt good. Everything worked as I expected it to. One thing that did surprise me though, is the paper appeared to dry pretty quickly and it wasn't like problematic in any way. There are pros and cons to working with a faster and a slower drying paper. Like if you want to do a lot of really wash oriented techniques, a lot of wet on wet, um, like Saunders Waterford is the go-to paper I would think because it stays wet for such a long time but for doing like small portraits or something it's just like always <laughs> I feel like I'm waiting on that paper forever so I, I'd rather use it for something big and expressive than something like this um for the size of this paper the drying time always felt perfect like I was never waiting on it to dry to be able to start the next part I would think like maybe okay I'll just work on this for a moment but then I go back and I'm like oh that's dry I could I could carry on so the drying speed was just really perfect for me and I even I don't have a lot of points for comparison I think art just dries a little slower um I feel like my etcher sketchbook the ones with the black cover dry slower and I'm judging that purely based on the plein air I did in, um, in Italy, the one plein air exercise where uh, I put down the first really liquidy washes of actually gouache, but like in a watercolor state. And I felt like I was waiting forever for that to dry so I could paint on top of it. That was really fun. I wish I got to do a little bit more plein air, but it does take a lot of time and the trip was kind of go, go, go. And then I got sick the next day, <laughs> but, um, maybe it was the plein air that made me sick. No, I think it was people in the tour group. There was a lot of coughing. A lot of coughing. Lesson learned. Um, but yeah, so where was I? Completely off topic as usual. Oh, here I am trying to use that really long brush and it is, it is putting down some paint, but I'm just, I was struggling a little bit. So I went back to my normal brush. I, I need to experiment with that more. Um, later I tried to do some really fine details and it just didn't seem to be letting go of paint. I used the rigor and it worked great. So I'm going to, I'm going to play a lot more with that one in my sketchbook and see how I feel about it. But yeah, um, this paper, I just, I found it really charming. <laughs> I like it. I like the size. I like the shape. I like the, uh, texture, the dry time. I'll just have to play with it a lot more because I worked in such light layers. It's hard to tell like how it compares saturation wise to like other papers. Cause sometimes if they absorb too quickly, you lose some saturation, but I'm working in such liquidy washy colors or layers that it's, it seems plenty saturated, but it's harder to compare. So maybe I'll do a side by side. I just, yeah, I, I felt so rusty. I said that already that I was just struggling to figure out what I wanted to do. And that makes me more tentative and putting down like lighter washes and building it up even more slowly than usual. So it took a million years to finish. 
and I did not have that much time. <laughs> so, um, otherwise, I've gone, everything's gone. But yeah, oh, oh, um, the other thing I wanted to say about this paper, I did find out upon coming back and looking it up, or actually I was, think I was still there and I looked it up, um, it's actually distributed in the States by Legion. So I've never seen this paper before I went to Italy, but I don't go to a lot of art supply stores because I don't live near any of them, but it sounds like it is possible to get it here stateside. Um, I'm sure if I really fall in love with it and have to buy more, I could get through Jackson's or another supplier too. So problem resolved. <laughs> one, one thing, like you never want to buy something and then like not like it, but you also don't want to buy something, fall in love with it, and then have no ability to get more of it when you run out. So pros and cons, but no, this seems like the sweet spot of having a nice souvenir from the trip and being able to procure more in the future. I don't know about prices though. I know this pad was 12 euro and I don't know if that was like consistent throughout the country. I did see it in a lot of places, but I bought it and moved on. Um, it's possible the store I went to was just a little bit more expensive too, or maybe even cheaper. So I don't know how it prices out compared to other brands. I was really rusty on the hair too. I was very unhappy with, with this painting and the process. But yeah, I think the, the paper was 12 euro and I know that because the stickers was on the back. Um, the, the two brushes I think were about 18 euro combined. So yeah, I mean, it, it was pretty affordable for, I'm going to ignore that phone call. <laughs> um, I think it was pretty affordable for like a vacation haul. You could always like justify spending a little extra money when you're on vacation because it's a souvenir. Um, and then I had to stop buying stuff from art supply stores because I bought my fountain pen and that was expensive. <laughs> so that was my big purchase for the trip. Plus I really didn't need more art supplies. So while I was tempted to try other things, I'm very glad I kept it to a minimum. But yeah, um, in conclusion, in short, my initial reactions are I really love this paper. I really don't know what I'm doing with that one brush at all, but I'll get back to it because I have to assume that like, unless something feels really wrong, I'm probably just using it wrong. So I'll play with it more. Maybe I can look it up and figure out what something quite that long is really meant for. Maybe it's meant for specific textures. I was thinking more like a fancy liner, but I don't know. And then, um, actually it's pretty much, oh, the rig is great. No comments, beautiful brush, works well, 10 out of 10. <laughs> um, I just recently bought my first rigger, so I really didn't need a second one, but that's okay. I think this one is a little shorter. Maybe it's not a rigger. I don't, I don't know what it is, but I like it. It's pretty. It matches my brush stand perfectly. Look at it. You can barely see it. <coughs> so... Yeah. Um, I really don't have much to say otherwise. I think I'll go into the trip itself more when I finally finish the my travel sketchbook. Um, and so you'll get to see my shoddy illustrations of everywhere I went. Um, I had planned to fill that out for like, I planned the number of days and kind of estimated how quickly I should use pages. But um, since I've been, since I got sick and um, yeah, sorry, excuse me. Since I got sick and I wasn't able to keep up with it as much, I, and then go as many places, um, I think there'll be a lot of empty pages at the end. So what I think I'm gonna do is do like the travel journal part and then go back and do some studies from like pictures I took of sculptures or art that I really liked and just spend some more time studying places I really liked. Um, in brief, like some of my favorite places were the Borghese Gallery in Rome, um, the the Vatican in general, St. Peter's Basilica had amazing art. Um, basically, I am obsessed with Bernini now, which I mean, I knew I liked this stuff before, but oh my God, <laughs> seeing it in person was incredible. And then we'll take it from there. I mean, I saw so much stuff. It was overwhelming at times. It was a great trip in terms of seeing art. Um, at this point, I am adding in white highlights somewhat regrettably and noodling with that. I'm just at a loss as to how to paint right now. 
but yeah, I'm just about done. Just adding some final details with my little rigger. And that's really all I have. And since I can't seem to stop coughing, I'm just going to call this voice over here. Um, while you can see me struggle with tape peeling about as much as I struggled with my ability to open the the thing in the first place. The paint really sealed around the sides. It made a nice, nice little block there. So I'm a mess. <laughs> I'm double checking it's dry. And it was, like I said, the drying time was really remarkable of this paper. Um, for some, it might be way too fast, but for me, I really enjoyed it. A little warping there, nothing too bad. Um, and yeah, that, that looks pathetic <laughs> on playback. So anyway, I hope you're all doing well, taking care of yourselves, staying a lot healthier than I've been. <laughs> Don't get sick. Enjoy the holidays. I can't believe it's already November. That's, that's blowing my mind. Um, already trying to figure out what to do for Thanksgiving and thinking ahead to Christmas and Wow, I can't believe we're already here at that point in the year, so that's wild. But yeah, that's all I have, so take care, and I hope to see you in a future video.